Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with Mednuggets. In today's video, we are going to talk about preterm labor. Labor is the onset of uterine contractions that lead to progressive cervical dilation and effacement, eventually resulting in the birth of the infant and expulsion of the placenta. Normal labor typically occurs between 37 and 42 weeks of pregnancy. If it happens before 37 weeks, we call it preterm labor, as it happens pre, before, term. Term refers to 37 to 42 weeks. With that said, a preterm birth refers to a live birth that occurs between 20 and 36 weeks. WHO further categorizes preterm births into extremely preterm, which occurs before 28 weeks, very preterm, which occurs before 32 weeks, and moderate to late preterm, which happens between 32 to less than 37 weeks. A birth that occurs before 20 weeks of pregnancy is typically referred to as a miscarriage or spontaneous abortion as a fetus born before 20 weeks is not viable. So what causes preterm labor? Well, no one exactly knows. But certain risk factors have been identified. Infections and inflammation can release prostaglandins which can stimulate uterine contractions, cervical effacement and weaken the amniotic membrane and rupture it. This can lead to preterm labor and delivery. Preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes can also cause preterm labor. As the moment your amniotic membranes rupture, you know you're going into labor. Any condition that affects the cervix and causes it to dilate and efface prematurely, such as cervical insufficiency, a short cervix, or history of cervical surgery like conization, can lead to preterm labor. Maternal smoking can affect the collagen production in the cervix and also lead to cervical insufficiency. Uterine overdistension caused by multiple gestations such as tweens, triplets, etc. can lead to preterm labor. Uterine anomalies like fibroids and anomalies of the Mullerian duct fusion can cause preterm labor as the uterus will not have enough space to accommodate the developing baby, so it will try to expel the baby as soon as possible. Fetal anomalies such as intrauterine fetal demise, intrauterine growth restriction, and congenital anomalies have also been associated with preterm labor. If the baby is not healthy, the uterus will try to get rid of it as soon as possible. Maternal trauma caused by intimate partner violence and conditions that affect the mother's health, such as hypertensive pregnancy disorders and diabetes, can also lead to preterm labor. Any stressful conditions to the mother or fetus, maternal substance use, early or advanced maternal age, low maternal pre-pregnancy weight, and a short interval between pregnancy usually less than 18 months, are also minor risk factors that have been associated with preterm labor. A simple way to remember these risk factors is to think of it as anything that affects the mother, including her health, her uterus, and her cervix, or any stress, can cause preterm labor. Anything that affects the baby and makes it sick can lead to preterm labor. Remember, when it comes to pregnancy-related pathologies, the age at which you get pregnant and the interpregnancy interval, which is the time period between two pregnancies, matter. So these are useful risk factors to consider in any pregnancy-related pathology. Now let's move on to the clinical features of preterm labor. The clinical features of preterm labor include regular uterine contractions, loss of mucus plug, cervical effacement and dilation, and rupture of membranes.
Preterm labor is a clinical diagnosis which is made on the basis of painful or uncomfortable uterine contractions. You can also perform a sterile exam to check for any cervical effacement, dilation, or rupture of membranes. Lab tests such as the fetal fibronectin test can also be used to confirm preterm labor. Fibronectin is a protein that attaches the fetal amniotic sac to the uterus. Usually between 24 to 36 weeks, the amniotic sac of the fetus is strongly attached to the uterus. But after 36 weeks, as the body gets ready to deliver the baby, this interface will start to become weaker and leak out those anchoring proteins into the amniotic fluid. High levels of fetal fibronectin before 36 weeks is associated with an increased risk of preterm labor and delivery. A transvaginal ultrasound measurement of cervical length of less than 15 mm before 32 weeks has also been associated with an increased risk of preterm labor. So how do you treat these patients? You can give tocolytics. Toco is contractions. Lytics is to break down. So you can give these drugs to lyse or stop the uterine contractions. The first-line drug we use is nifedipine. Nifedipine is a prostaglandin inhibitor. Since prostaglandins are what causes uterine contractions in the first place, inhibiting them would stop the uterus from contracting. Tocolytics can usually cause prolongation of labor up to seven days. In the meantime, you can give the patient corticosteroids to promote fetal lung maturity. Fetal lung maturity is generally considered to be complete at around 36 weeks of gestation. By this time, the lungs produce sufficient amounts of surfactant to help keep alveoli open. So it's crucial to give corticosteroids to promote surfactant production if you're planning on delivering a baby before 36 weeks. For preterm labor at less than 34 weeks gestation, we can also administer antibiotics for GBS prophylaxis. For a mother less than 32 weeks gestational age, we also need to give magnesium sulfate for fetal neuroprotection to prevent conditions such as cerebral palsy in the baby. So how can you prevent preterm labor? Primary prevention measures such as screening for hypertension, gestational diabetes, infections, and counselling on smoking cessation can help prevent preterm labour. For patients with cervical insufficiency or a short cervix, you can give vaginal progesterone or perform a cervical circlage. Screening for short cervical length early on in the pregnancy can also reduce the chances of preterm labour. So this brings us to the end of this video. If you liked our video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Wishing health and happiness to anyone who is expecting. Have a great day.